السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر ഹമദുഹുറസൂന ഹലീം <تصفيق> وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا أَمَّا بَعْدُ إِنَّ خَيْرَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار People have influence over one another So much so that you may have an opinion or an idea or an ideology for yourself and then you would meet someone or you would listen to someone or a group and you would constantly listen to them and even if perhaps they do not change your opinion or ideology but still that influence from listening to them and from being with them will enter your heart and perhaps within that moment they won't change how you think they won't change how you are but if you keep on staying and listening to such people inevitably in 90 or majority of the cases they will change you step by step until you become like them and this it extends not only to speech and action but how they are 
with other people, their mannerisms. For humans are social creatures. We would want to be within a group, within a society and a community, and we don't like to be alone, we don't like to be outcasted or to be social pariahs. And so sometimes you would lean towards a certain statement that people would make just so that you remain within that group or just so you can stay listening to such people and being with such people. Hence, it is incredibly and vitally important for a Muslim to choose and see who he listens to and who he befriends, who he takes as a companion and who he keeps in his company. For this could be a matter between heaven and hell, between Jannah and Jahannam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ar-rajulu ala deeni khalilah. That a man, a person, is upon the religion of his friend. فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِمْ So let you see who you befriend. You should scrutinize. You should see the criteria of who you should befriend. Is your religion going to be at stake? Are they calling towards goodness and righteousness? Are they people of good standing? Are they people of piety? Are they people of Quran and Sunnah? The people who attend the masjid? Or are they the ones that will turn you away from such things? Turn you away from the deeds of paradise? The, te the deeds that will lead you to eternal life abiding therein in paradise? Those that when they, you talk to them and you are with them, they talk of matters that turn you away from the dhikr of Allah, from the remembrance of Allah, and so in turn, turn you away from deeds that will lead you towards paradise and deeds that will bring you closer towards the hellfire. Are they those who tell you to go to cinemas and movies and events, concerts? Or are they those who tell you to attend lectures, attend the masjid, the halaqat of dhikr, the circles of knowledge? And you would follow that person wherever they go. If you befriend them and you are in their company most of the time, you will go where they go. Like I said, you do not want to feel left out. You do not want to be outcasted. So if you've made friends and you've made a company of people and you befriended such people, then you do not want to stay away from them, even though they may call you towards that which you know to be immoral and indecent, that you know which contradicts the religion. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said, مَثَلُ الْجَلِيسِ الصَّالِحِ وَالْجَلِيسِ السُّوءِ كَمَثَلِ صَاحِبِ الْمِسْكِ وَكِيدِ الْحَدَّادِ That the like and the similitude of the pious company and the pious friend and also the immoral and the evil friend is like that of the fragrant term or the perfumer or the fragrant seller. وَكِيدِ الْحَدَّادِ And the furnace of the bellow or uh, the furnace of the blacksmith. You could say modern day terms the factory or the garage. لا يعدمك من صاحب المسك إما تشتريه أو تجد ريحة. That you would always find either from the seller of the mosque, the fragranter, either you would buy from him the perfume which you can then benefit from, or you would at the very least you will smell the fragrance. So you will see and be influenced and experience the goodness of such a person. وَكِيرُ الْحَدَّادِ يُحْلِقُ بَدَنَكْ أَوْ ثَوْبَكْ أَوْ تَجِدُ مِنْهُ رِيحًا خَبِيرًا And as for the one, the blacksmith and his bellows and his furnace or the garage and the factory with their fumes, either they will burn and harm your clothes and your body 
or at the very least you will find an abominable smell, a foul smell that will linger with you. So perhaps with the Sahib al Misk or with the good companion, you may not speak like they speak. They speak righteousness. They call towards taqwa. They mention ayat of Allah and the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa You may not know that. And you will not say that or do what they do. But just being in their company will inf influence you and it will have that good effect upon you. And slowly but surely, you will then feel to be like them. You will want to be like them. And in contrast, the Sahib Su or the Sahib Su, the evil person, if you are with him, maybe perhaps you may say to yourself, I'm not saying the stuff that he says. I'm not doing the stuff that he does. I'm just with him. You know, he's my mate. But inevitably, that will influence your heart and will darken it. Slowly but surely. And if you keep with him, or those type of people, first and foremost, you will then accept what they do. Or you won't begrudge them. Or you won't find it evil. And then later on, you will start saying what they say. Doing what they do. And before you know it, you're away from the religion. Sufyan Athori, he said that there is nothing that corrupts a person or rectifies him more than his companion. And this comes with experience. We can only look within ourselves and from what we've experienced with ourselves and with our companions. How when you're with a group of people who remind you of Allah, then you would want to remember Allah. And then if you are with people who turn you away from Allah and turn you towards matters of the dunya and things that do not concern you and do not concern your akhirah, in fact, will have a harmful effect upon your akhirah. Then maybe in the beginning you may feel bad, but if you keep in their company, it'll just be normal. And when the ayat of Quran are recited upon you, when you're in such company, you dislike it. Because they would dislike it. And you would be just like them. So if one chooses to mingle and to be in the company of those who are known to be evil, who are known to be disobedient, who are known to be innovators in the religion, who are, known, who are non Muslims, inevitably, without a shadow of a doubt, they will affect you and they will corrupt your soul without you realizing before you become just like them. For their influence will inevitably project upon you, and even in the slightest chance, it may not affect you. Your worth and your status amongst the reputable people and respectable people, the Muslims, the respectable Muslims and the respectable people of the community, it will diminish. And they will see you like they see them. You may not speak the way they speak or do the way they do, but just being with them, they will count you amongst them. <clears throat> and the worst companionship is that of the corrupt is that of the non-believing person as related in the passage of the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrates about a person qala qailun minhum inni kana li qareen that a person from ahlul jannah he will say i used to have a close companion a, pa uh, a friend yaqulu innak la min al-musaddiqin and he used to say are you from those who believe you know, this person might be from university and you might befriend him because they sit next to you. And then he's saying, do you really believe in God? How can you believe in God when all the scientists allude to the fact that there is no God? Look at the evolution, the evolution theory. Look at the Big Bang theory. You don't believe in that? Look at all this evidence and so on and so forth. And they will continue to corrupt you. 
How can God be so merciful, you say, and kind when there's so, in, you know, atrocities, cancer, and so on and so forth, and they will continue to corrupt you. And if you do not have knowledge, and if you do not accompany with those who have knowledge and teach you, then you will be affected. And your heart will be corrupted, just like their heart is corrupted. And you will start talking just like they start talking. And many a time, you see many, many Muslims who turn away from the religion. Why? Because of the company they keep, the people they listen to. And it, that starts all of it. So this person, يقول أينك لمن المصدقين؟ Are you from those who testify? إذا متنا وكلنا ترابا وعظاما إن لمدينون that when we die and we become dust and bones that we're going to be taken to account. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قَالَ هَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُطَّلِعُونَ It will be said, Do you wish to see? فَاتَّلَعَ فَرَاهُ فِي سَوَى الْجَحِيمِ And he will see that person in the midst of Jahannam. قَالَ تَاللَّهِ إِنْ كِتَّ لَا تُرْدِينَ By Allah, you nearly ruined me. وَلَوْ لَنِعْمَةُ رَبِّ لَكُمْتُ مِنَ الْمُحْضَرِينَ And if it weren't for the bounty and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon me, then I would have been just like those who have been gathered in the hellfire. And in another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَيَوْمَ يَعُضُّ الظَّالِمُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ يَقُولْ يَا لَيْتَنِ اتَّخَدْتُ مَعَ الرَّسُولِ سَبِيلًا On the day the disobedient and the wrongdoer, he will bite upon his hands and his nails and he will say, Oh, woe to me, had I taken a path with the messenger. يَا وَيْلَتَا لَيْتَنِي لَمَا اتَّخِذْ فُلَانًا خَلِيلًا Oh, woe to me, had I not taken such and such person as a friend. لَقَدْ أَضَلَّنِي عَنِ الذِّكْرِ بَعْدَ جَاءَنِي Indeed, he led me astray from the reminder, from the Qur'an, from the Sunnah, after it came to me. وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ لِلْإِنسَانِ خَذُولًا And verily, shaytan is ever treacherous to the man. وَأَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمُ لِسَادِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهِ إِنَّهُ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله الشهد ولا إله إلا الله أن محمدا عبده ورسوله عليه الصلاة والسلام أما بعد and it is the companionship of the pious and the dutiful Muslims that you will find benefit and you will bear the fruit of this not only in this dunya but it will be al akhira you will be friends today. And you will be friends tomorrow, eternally. بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَا خِلَّاوْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُوْ إِلَّا الْمُتَّقِينَ That on that day, friends will become enemies of one another. No matter how close you are, you're going to find enmity within you. You're going to abandon them and they're going to abandon you. They're going to throw you away and you're going to throw them away. And you will become enemies. Except Al-Muttaqeen. Except those who are pious. Those who are God-fearing. Those who remind you of Allah. Why? Because they reminded you of Al-Akhirah. They reminded you of the Quran and the Sunnah. They reminded you of Allah. And the standing before Allah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So that you prepared for that day. And both of you prepared for that day. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala within His mercy... He accepted you and placed the records in your right hand, both of you, and you became friends. And you were friends in the dunya, and you're still friends in al-akhirah and in jannah. This is true friendship. This is true companionship. And this is something that we should adhere to and we should seek. And not those who call towards anything other than the religion and anything other than righteousness and piety and anything other than the remembrance of Allah. For they, the pious people, are those who remind you of Allah and they forbid you from the evil and enjoin what is good. Such was the companionship of the Sahaba within themselves. 
أشداء على الكفار رحماء بينهم. They were stern of those who were non-Muslims, but they were merciful and compassionate within themselves. With themselves, they used to do mawaiba and tadkira. They used to remind each other, for that will increase in their faith. Some of the companions would say, "Let's sit. Let's not min sa. Let's believe." A few moments. Let's increase in our iman. These are the righteous people that we should be befriending and keeping company of. Such was the companionship of the Sahaba, and such was the companionship of the com- the people of the cave, Ashabul Kah, which, inshallah, we read every every uh, Jum'ah. And you look at them; they were youth, fitya. They were teenagers or young men. And so in this is a guidance and a lesson, especially to the youth. Look how they took their iman. Look how they took their religion. Their whole community was against them. The whole community did not believe in the tawheed of Allah and they did shirk. And they got together and they become a company of themselves and they made comp- uh, companions with themselves and they realize after a while that these people they're not going to believe and they're, they're just going to harm them did they stay within that town letting them turn them away from the religion no they they left it and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them and placed them in that cave where they remained for 300 years until there came a people that would accept them and so this should be the case for the youth the teenagers, when you're young, you're impressionable, impressionable. When you're young, you give in to peer pressure. Your, your ideas are not as solid when you're an adult or when you're grown old. So you listen to this and you listen to that. And so you're going to be influenced by everything more or less. So choose what you listen to. Choose who you are to be with, who your friends are. The company you keep. <coughs> I remember one time, and there's many a time that's happened, but this one just uh, is on my mind right now. That I was going to the masjid for Salatul Maghrib, and I saw two of my, I wouldn't say mates, but two people I knew from school. And I said, uh, I gave salam and said, How are you? and so on and so forth. And I said, I need to go to the masjid, let's go to the masjid and pray salah. So one of them, he looked at me, then he looked at his other person, the person who was with, who was also uh, someone I knew. And they kept on doing it for a couple of times until that other person just walked away, just turned around and walked away. And he didn't even say anything. And then that person followed him, missing the wajib of Islam, from the fara'id of Islam. Had that other person will not be there, you know, with the conflict of interest within his mind, uh, I would have thought he would have followed. But you can see the influence of such people. Who called you towards Islam? Who called you towards the Sunnah? Who called you towards righteous deeds? And who called you away from all of that? You should see who does all that and befriend accordingly. Sufyan Athori said, above all things, the one thing I found to be benefit a person most in this world and the hereafter is a suitable brother. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu attaqullah wa kunu ma'a sadiqeen. O you who believe, fear Allah and be with those who are truthful. Don't be with the fujjar, don't be with the kadibeen, the evildoers and the liars. Be those who are truthful in their speech. Truthful in their actions, truthful to Allah and the Sunnah. Be with those. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are amongst them. Inna Allah amarakum bi amrin badahu bi nafsi faqala jalla wa ala. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al nabi. Ya ayuhal ladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Fa akthiru min al salati wa salami ala nabiyikum. فإن من صلى عليه مرة واحدة صلى الله عليه بها عشرا 
اللهم صل وسلم على نبينا محمد اللهم ارضى عن خلفائه الراشدين المهديين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي أفضل أتباع المرسلين اللهم ارضى عن الصحابة أجمعين وعن التابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم ارضى عنا معهم وأصلح أحوالنا كما أصلحت أحوالهم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشكين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين اللهم آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم ثبت القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم صرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك قوموا إلى صلاتكم الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين هل أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعيها راضية في جنة عانية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مصفوفة وزرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبن كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر 